saying that in the years 37, 38, and 39, your office was literally jammed with frantic people in Toronto. Because I see a lot of letters you were giving the extra pay at one point for the tremendous work. But what was a week then like? Could you describe the sort of atmosphere that pervaded the office as well as you can remember it? Well, at that time, don't forget, you're talking about 30... Yeah, thir any year in the 30s. 37, 30, 38, 39. 39. Well, you're, uh, let's, uh, uh, first of all, the concern of the people prior to the war, uh, asking what could be done, and uh, even if we accepted the applications, as I uh, uh, mentioned a few minutes ago, uh, the presentation uh, of the uh, various applications to the department just uh, did not elicit any results. So while we accepted applications for close relatives, with the war being imminent, and uh, the atmosphere being so tense, by the time you filed the application, and the application came to Ottawa, there was nothing that you could do. But the offices were flooded with inquiries as to the whereabouts of their relatives, and we have a tracing service, and we used to um, put it through the various uh, organizations mm -hmm. prior to the outbreak of war. There right. were still Jewish organizations in Poland, in Romania. Um, you were linked with the Worldwide Network of Worldwide, Highest, were you not? Yes. Worldwide ne uh, Network with the Hebrew Immigrant Aid Services. Right. And uh, we were busy with the tracing of relatives and filing the application for close relatives. How many of you were there? There were just three of you in the office at this time, were there not? At Finkelstein, the uh, Salkin and yourself? Uh, it was uh, Mr. Salkin and myself, just the two. There was a, um, a Mr. Kaplan who used to travel oh, yeah, he was a field organizer. for the um, agency as a field organizer. And this is where the uh, annual membership came in that I just mentioned at the outset of the interview. That he traveled from uh, Hamlet to uh, to city, to uh, all these little countries and uh, towns to collect the annual membership for Giants. He would come in from time to time to see how um, things uh, are with the membership in Toronto. But coming back to the uh, activities in, um, in the Toronto office, it was quite busy. And at that time, we also handled uh, material oh, so assistance, right. parcels to Russia and Poland. They were extremely popular, were they not? There was a Tsekabe that they call oh. it. <laughs> and um, um, we were very, very busy. Uh, at that time, uh, we, uh, our offices were open on Sundays from 10 to 1, and uh, I remember that um, uh, occasionally I had to come in Saturday night from 7 to 9 to get the parcels in or prepare a shipment of parcels to Poland or Russia. As for the parcels, were they prepared by the people themselves, or was there a standard parcel that was ordered for a certain amount of money? How exactly does that work? With the Russian parcels, there was the and Polish parcels. First it was a Tsekabe service, and then we switched to care. With Russia, it was also uh, on the uh, basis of a list that uh, the Amtorg, they called it, that was the, um, the, the Russian the Chronicle. That's right. right. That's right. Uh, also on the basis of a list, which in later years um, 
developed into uh, a buy-it-yourself uh, apparatus. You could get your own items and uh, they were brought into this, the uh, office. We would um, calculate the duty and other charges and send them on. Was it expensive in terms of? It was quite expensive as it is to this very day. Uh, now the Russian parcels are uh, uh, being um, uh, handled by um, uh, the uh, organization at 962 Bloor Street uh, West, uh, where the prices are exorbitant. The parcel may cost you anywhere between two and three hundred dollars.